These Indonesian farmers in the village of Sumbai Jaya are having to slaughter all their poultry. Earlier in the week, several birds died here from the deadly H5N1 bird flu virus. The villagers are using protective equipment provided by their government to cull the birds, but they don't know how to use it correctly. Handling infected birds with bare hands and feet could lead to infection. This scene is being repeated in many villages across Indonesia as authorities and international agencies fight to contain this deadly disease. But the challenge is great, with Indonesia spread across 18,000 islands. What we find in all the areas where we look, bird flu is, is fully endemic, and basically you couldn't get any more bird flu occurring in the country. It's, it's become a common disease, um, and where we have surveillance teams, they find it every week. The human cost of bird flu has been higher in Indonesia than anywhere else in the world. This year alone, more than 40 Indonesians have died from the disease. In an attempt to contain the disease, the Food and Agriculture Organization is training government veterinarians. They're learning how to be part detective, part diplomat. After a few basics in the classroom, the vets head out to villages to talk with local people who are raising chickens in their yards. The idea is that building trust will lead to the discovery of more sick birds. Farmers are often afraid to admit they have sick birds in their village for fear of losing their livelihoods. Today, in this neighborhood, progress is being made. Locals lead the vets to a lone sick bird and another dead bird that they want tested for bird flu. I think this training will bring many changes in our work. Because here we are asked to be active in finding the disease. While in the past we were just passive and filed a report. Finding bird flu is just the first step. Infected birds must be safely culled and the village disinfected. After that, veterinary teams must continue surveillance. But all this is expensive. Experts estimate a full-scale vaccination program could cost 88 million US dollars. That's why Indonesia and the international community are working together. But they're being held back by the nature of donor funding, which is often short-term and comes with restrictions on how and where it can be used. We're starting to see some progress, but I think we are a long way off the sort of the final objective. So there's a lot of uh, commitment and resourcing required both from within the government of Indonesia, but also perhaps particularly from the international donor community. While progress in Indonesia has been slow, just 3,000 kilometers away in Vietnam, the story has been very different. Highly centralized and with its government committed to fighting the disease, Vietnam is considered one of the most successful countries when it comes to containing bird flu. Everywhere, people are on guard for signs of the disease. The country has been vaccinating systematically wherever and whenever an outbreak is detected. It's a policy that not only works, but has been popular with poultry farmers like Huyen Trinh Thi, who raises poultry and other animals for extra cash and to feed her extended family. I'm very pleased with the government vaccination program. It prevents the virus in my birds and that protects my family. Originally hard hit by bird flu, 42 people died from the disease, second only to Indonesia. This year, there hasn't been a single human case of the disease. And it's vaccination centers like this one outside Hanoi that have helped bring the disease under control. Farmers arrive early to take advantage of the program. But vaccinating poultry only works if you vaccinate all the poultry in a given area. We managed to vaccinate 100% of the chickens in this village, about 12,000 of them, because a few days ago we ran a campaign about this vaccination program and got all the local farmers to sign letters promising that they would bring their birds to us. Vaccination is only one part of Vietnam's strategy, which also includes culling and tight controls over the transportation of poultry. Better laboratories and testing are also playing a major role. While Vietnam is not free from the virus, the disease has been held at bay for over a year. But that success may not last. With the region and other countries recently having had recurrence of outbreaks, it shows the virus is around. Um, and it's no surprise at all if there would be further outbreaks. Uh, the, the government needs to maintain its commitment 
Uh, in particular, we need the donors to maintain their commitment. A lasting commitment is needed both from countries suffering from the virus and from the international community if a human pandemic is to be avoided.